Hi, my name is Travis Snyder and I'm going to be talking about population and urbanization. I'm going to be focusing on urbanization throughout the ages and how it has changed. The sociological perspective I'm going to be looking at urbanization from is functionalism. To start off, demography is the study of the growth and decline of the human population and how it has changed throughout time and how it has and what has caused it to change. For most of human history, we lived in tribes or clans during hunter-gathering times. We were nomadic and only collected the food we needed to survive. As time went on, farming was discovered and changed the way we lived forever. It was much easier and much more efficient to save to collect food by farming. To farm properly, though, you needed to live close by to the fields you were farming in. So houses started to be constructed around the fields. Everyone kept building houses around the farms and making new farms, and this would be the first example of urbanization happening in human history. The population kept increasing to have more people work on the farms. More people went, meant more houses, which increased the urbanization of the world overall. People spread out all over the world, creating farms and subsequently making cities urbanization like this. Very linear, urbanization was like this, very linear in growth. This changed up until the Industrial Revolution. Technological progression was creating inventions that made it easy, easier to produce things like furniture and clothing. More people needed to fill those jobs. Cities were created around certain industries like steel with Pittsburgh and the car industry being Detroit. This was the start of the modern urbanization as we know. People fled to the cities to make money working these new jobs. But an economist named Thomas Malthus had a theory that would that we would run out of food. He's thinking that food would only go up in a linear progression like 1, 2, 3, 4. But while our population, on the other hand, would increase exponentially like 2, 4, 16, 2, 50, what Malthus didn't think was that new ways to increase farming could be discovered allowing for more food than ever to be produced. People were making very little money during this time, so they may have more kids to send to work. This skyrocketed the population faster than it ever has before. As time went on, the population just kept growing. Though as a downside, the cities became overcrowded and it was difficult to live in. Suburbanization was created to combat this crowding. This is where instead of flocking the cities, people inside the city started going outside to form suburbs. This is the process that is still happening today. Suburbs are getting bigger and cities are getting smaller. Suburbanization is more supported by the population growth has changed. In 1931, an American dream was thought of and created, though it has changed in the 1960s. American dream consisted of a suburban house, two parents, and typically two kids. This shows with the average amount of kids per family was 2.33 in the 1960s. Though it has been on the decline since 1971, it dropped below 2 in the 1978. This has slowed down the population growth of the United States. Even if the population has slowed down, the desire to make your own American dream has not. As a result, the demand for suburban households went up. This just increased the amount of suburbanization happening in the United States. These suburbs were still count as cities and served the same purpose as the early cities did. Cities have served their purpose and they are still to this day. They were to create a lot of housing in a small amount of space to house our exponentially increasing population to allow people not to go homeless during the increasingly quick population change. The first billion was reached during the Industrial Revolution in about 1800s. About 130 years later, the second billion was reached. 30 years later, in 1960, the third billion was reached. After that, it was only about a 12-year gap between the rest of the goals we have reached the, through 4 through 7 billion. Though we, due to our society and how money makes it work, it is hard for the cities to serve their purpose today as everyone cannot use the houses as they are originally intended to. They cannot access them and therefore cities are losing their original function to house large numbers of population at a single time. Th but thank you for spending your time and watching my video on urbanization and population and have a good rest of your day.